Can AI code in ABAP? I have no idea. Let's check. In mid-August 2023, SAP presented a demo in which AI programmed in ABAP. It is clear that the clip was very impressive. Generative AI was able to not only write program code, but also produce all the necessary elements. And all this was done in one click, based on a short description inserted into the code. From zero to a working program in seconds. However, there was also a comment that this is just a preview to show what SAP experts are working on. To be honest, having had some attempts to generate code in various languages using LLMs, I have to say that it looked a little too optimistic, especially for August 2023. So what? Time passes, and I haven't seen any further development or official presentation of the finished product. That's why I decided to see what can be done having generally available free tools. Is it possible to ask AI to create a program in SAP? Will it work? Can you create programs in AB app without any programming experience? Let's see. I will be using a free SAP system based on ABAP platform trial for the experiments. You should be aware that it is not S4 HANA. It does not contain any business logic. On the other hand, I don't need to run tests in business areas. I'll start with a quick glance at the USR02 table, which contains technical data about SAP users. These are the users of my system. The B name is the user name. Let's pick some other interesting columns. USTYP is the type of user. A is the dialog. B is the system. ERDAT is the date the account was created. Next column, TRDAT is the last logon date. As we look at SAPDOF, we can see more data, such as the date of the last login with a password or the date of the last password change. There is also a password hash. I'm closing the table preview now because it's time to finally deal with the AI part. I said that today I would use only free tools, so I'll start with Microsoft's Copilot. It is powered by ChatGPT version 4 and is free. Unlike ChatGPT directly on the open AI pages, of course, OpenAI gives you additional features. You might even be able to choose a model in the GPT store that can handle programming better, but we'll leave that for another episode. For now, I'm switching to a web browser and the copilot.microsoft.com page. When talking to GPT, it is very important to give context. So I will ask him to respond like an ABAP developer. I will request that he create a report with a list of system users. I won't suggest where in the system to find them, but I'll also ask for specific data that we know is in the USR02 table. So GPT needs to demonstrate knowledge of the tables in the system in addition to knowledge of ABAP itself. Or find this information on websites, because Copilot has the advantage of searching the web very efficiently. It has been just started responding. Yes, he gets into the role of the developer. The code is starting to come up, but I can already see that in addition to USR02, it also wants to use AGR users for some reason. Surprisingly, however, the select is with USR02. B name and USTYP were selected correctly. Also, TRDAT is fine. But for some reason, it excludes system users. In addition, incorrectly, because B type is system, not S. Other than that, it looks rather okay at first glance. Here is an explanation of why AGR users were selected. Just in case. I copy the code to the clipboard. I'll see if I can compile it. I need an ABAP editor, so I go to Transaction SE38. I will name the program ZList and click Create. I need to input a title. Then I choose Type of Coding, Executable Program. This is enough and I can save. This is my sandbox system, so I can use a local object without any problems. An empty report has been created. I can replace it with AI-generated code. Then I save the program. Saved. The next step is activation. A moment of truth about the correctness of syntax. And I can already run it. This is amazing. Isn't it? It worked right off the bat. And now we have the report, which I requested. Maybe this is not optimal, but it's always a very promising start. I'll go back to my chat and ask for corrections. It may be minor, but first I'll ask if it's sure when it comes to this S, which he considers system users.
It is very good to be able to admit one's mistake and apologize. GPT has mastered this art to perfection, but it also has reflexivity and is able to see that factually it was a mistake. S is a service user. Of course, nothing more comes of it. But I will inform AI that I don't want to exclude any users from the list. My system is inclusive, bias is not tolerated, and there is a place for everyone. I also need to clearly communicate that I'm not interested in any information related to authorizations and the redundant table reference is not required. One more apology. Good. Now there is only USR02 on the list. The S user type condition was also removed. I got a pretty nice explanation that no filters of any kind are currently being used. There is also information on what data the report contains along with the column names. In my opinion, the problem is still that the report does not contain headers, so it may not be very readable. So I would ask to add them. It is really nice how quickly I get a new version of the program. Of course, you can complain that other models are faster, but on the other hand, as compared to the human work, the result is really lightning fast. The headers have been added, although I think they are separated from the table. The line is written out in any case. I'll copy the code and go to my transaction. I need to exit from the report. I'll paste the new code in place of the old one. I need to save. Saved. Now the activation. Oh, there is an activation error. I think the into phrase placing the result in a variable was lost. I will copy the error. Obviously, it could happen to anyone. You should be aware that AI, just like humans, makes mistakes. But if humans correct them, then GPT should too. I'm informing Copilot about the error. This apology is really a good tactical play. Now I'm thinking to myself, no problem, dude. I'm wrong sometimes too. But it is already improving. And in the new version, we have the into clause again. Great, maybe now it will work. I copy and go back to SAP. I repeat the routine. Paste the new code in place of the old one. I save. I wait. I activate. Successful. I launch. Again, we have the opportunity to celebrate. The report works. We have beautiful headers. Too bad they are not aligned with the columns. But after all, we should be happy, even with small achievements. However, my inner perfectionist does not allow me to leave it without trying to correct it. I'm asking to align the headings with the content. Oh, AI apologizes again for the formatting problem. It promises to correct it. Okay. Let's see what is the difference. But wait. I see no difference. Did I overlook something? Never mind. I'll copy the code and see if it works. Why not? Sometimes we think there is no difference, but the devil is in the details. I'm going through a magical ritual with replacement. Saving and activation. I think it should work, but I don't expect fireworks. Well, I was right. It is as it was. Neither better nor worse. At least it's not worse. I'm going to argue with the AI for a moment longer. Of course, an apology and a new version of the report. Let's see if anything changes. Oh, exactly the same. Well, I'll leave the unfortunate headers already and get on with something more useful. I'll ask to add some data, but I won't state what I mean. Let Copilot show inventiveness and propose something. This understood to add additional information to each user. Very good, but wait. U flags is the user's lock status. But what the heck is U name? I don't recall. Explanation will help. The full name odd description of the user. But the table doesn't contain such data. Whatever, we're having fun. I'll copy the code as if I overlooked this problem and we'll see how this guy will handle the error message. Code substitution is slowly becoming monotonous, but on the other hand, it is getting more and more automatic. Only errors in activation break the pattern. As I said, there is no such thing as U name. I'm afraid that the information about A name and B name from the error message will suggest to AI a simple but wrong solution. I'm posting the error message. 
a traditional apology from the master of courtesy. But I'm more interested in whether you name will be changed to a name. Unbelievable how well I know this AI. Dear AI, you are doing it wrong. You could finally learn the structure of USR02 and use that knowledge. And to that it explains that a name is a full name or description. There is no such thing as full name in USR02. Remember this. To show that this is nonsense, I will try to run the code. Again, I'm going back to SAP to replace the report code and see if it compiles, although I assume it will. Standard procedure. No activation errors. There is a list. These are most likely account creator IDs, definitely not full name. I'm going back to the code. I will ask about this A name column. I will try not to be too sarcastic. We'll see if he figures out what the problem is. We'll see what its response is. Certainly. Understanding illusions may not be his strongest point, and he took my question literally. He is pleased with himself that he was able to help. Confidence is a very important quality. I may even appreciate that he doesn't take my questions too personally and always responds kindly. So I'll ask one more question, just so the sarcasm doesn't get past him by a mile. Now that's what I'm asking out of pure curiosity. I wonder what it will answer. It's a bit like psychoanalysis rather than coding, but I hope the audience will forgive me. All in all, it's also fascinating. This thanks me for finding the mistake and appreciates my attention to detail. I feel appreciated. This is also valuable. In addition to coding, AI takes care of my emotional well-being. Basically, it's very nice of it. But I am not fooled by polite words. I want blood. I mean code, just program code. And I get a new code, letter by letter, variable by variable, line by line. Yet I gave my attention a distraction. I overlooked by the fact that a name was proposed as application name. Yes, quite a nice guess. So human. It's just that guessing in SAP often ends up astray. But I'll let it go, I'll just ask it to rename that column. And maybe to add one more, literally and verbosely as possible. It is starting to generate code slowly. Let's see if it can handle it. A name is the creator. Okay. But GLTGB is the expiration date and not the creation. All right. I think this is slowly getting a bit boring. I believe this is the right moment to stop, and everyone has already rather formed an opinion on how it works. In my opinion, it doesn't work badly, although it depends for whom and for what applications. Let's say that it knows how to do something there, but the devil is in the details. There is certainly room for improvement. I will make another approach and see if such a report can be generated as ALV to make it look more modern. Having learned from experience, I will ask to check the structure of the USR02 table right away to avoid tedious error correction. After all, context is king, right? I am very curious to see how it will go this time, although I have some concerns. For a while, the information about searching for the structure of the table USR02 showed up. The big advantage of Copilot is that it can search for information to perform the task. Great. It prepared a step-by-step -step plan. This helps a lot, not only for humans. Homework done, as sample fields of the table listed exactly what is needed. The second point is to create a report using ALV. Sounds like a good plan. The report was generated pretty quickly. The explanation sounds quite reasonable. On top of that, in point four, I got a hint that I can execute it in SE38 transaction. I see a call to the reuse ALV grid display function. I will copy the code and see if it works. I'm going to SAP to use this code. The already known transaction SE38. I give any name starting with Z and create. One more title. Of course I have to choose the type of program. I choose local object and paste my code. Pasted. Time to save before activation. Activate. 
Nice. Compiled. I can run it. Great. It works. Modern look with sorting options, filtering, and column selection. Okay, maybe not perfect because I see whole table, not only given fields, but I'm satisfied. I think it's enough coding with GPT. Let's move forward and take care of something else. When I think about how AI can help SAP consultants, one thing comes to mind. A skill that makes life a lot easier when you're a consultant is reading ABAP code. Yes, a consultant rarely needs to create new programs, but is more likely to encounter situations where it's worthwhile to take a peek at the code and see what the error is due to. On the other hand, learning to program code if you're not an ABAP developer probably doesn't make much sense and this is where AI may be able to help. So I'll look up some very simple code snippet and see if Copilot can explain its meaning to me. I need to choose an example. I am looking for a report on expired certificates. I use it sometimes in my basis administrator job. When I run this, a selection screen appears. When I go further, I get a list of certificates on the system with warnings about expiration dates. I'll go back to SE38 to see a code of this report. This is the code. At the beginning, there is a comment with a description of the functionality. Next begins the definition of the selection screen. I think I can take this simple code for further consideration. I copy it to the clipboard. There is a definition of one two-character field and five checkboxes. I will compare it with the report. Yes, I think my code is just describing the scope of checks section. Although, of course, there are no texts in the snippet, just item definitions. Here we have a two-character field with the number of days, and then five checkboxes, three of which are selected by default. I'm going to co-pilot to have assigned it a new task. I ask it directly to explain the code and paste it. The first success is undoubtedly the recognition that it is ABAP language. Analysis appears. The first point speaks of two lines that are a logical whole. Yes, okay, they define a block called limit. And the description is in text 001, which is defined here. So, after all, it cannot know what text is in the header. It also depends on the language used by the user. The analysis continues to generate. Let's wait a while and see what we have next. Eight points in the summary at the end. The second point refers to the S limit field. Very nicely shown the meaning of each smallest piece of code. Name, number of characters, numeric type, obligatory nature of the field, and default value. I will go back to the report for a moment to see this field. Yes, point two just describes the number of days until expiration field. Everything is correct. Let me now see the rest of the analysis. The next five points describe the checkboxes with information about which ones are checked by default. Item 8 describes the closing of the limit block. Finally, we have a neat summary of the meaning of the snippet in two sentences. In my opinion, Copilot has handled this task brilliantly. Thanks, Copilot. Very good job. I can move on to the next topic, and it is Google Gemini. Gemini is a relatively young model. It was introduced in December 2023. However, one thing must be understood. Gemini is actually three different models. The small nano, the medium pro, and the large ultra. And it is the ultra that is potentially a worthy competitor to GPT-4. On the other hand, we only get access to the pro version for free. The ultra called Gemini Advanced comes at an additional cost, and I'm focusing on the free tools today. Gemini will get the same task as Copilot, to write a report listing all users in the system. I will give the context. I will specify the two columns I want. The initial conditions are the same. We'll see how it handles programming. This processes the query. It looks a bit more modern than GPT, but it is the content that counts after all. Wow, it's fast. The table seems well selected but the report itself somehow looks strange. I sense a slight hallucination. But I won't analyze too much. The code looks harmless, so I'll move it to SAP. 
transaction SE38 is again what I need. I'm creating a new report. Title and type are required as always. I'm saving this as a local object. I'm pasting the Gemini's code. Saving. Then activating. And we see an error. Type USR type is unknown. I'm copying the message to clipboard. I'll inform Gemini about the issue. Yes, it's fast. But I still don't quite like this report. The nested query to the USR01 table is completely unnecessary here. Maybe just ask it to use only the USR02 table after. The unnecessary nested query has been removed, that's good. But BUTYP is certainly not part of USR02. Maybe I will ask about this element directly. I ask as clearly as I can. I don't know. I have some mixed feelings when it comes to Gemini. Let's see, maybe it will reflect and improve the code using the correct column name. Well, no, definitely not, stubbornly. It said it had to use USR01 after all and reverted to the previous version of the report. The only thing is that this column does not appear in USR01. Totally wrong. This is no longer promising. Maybe I'll give it another shot and copy the initial prompt to the new chat. Let it approach this with a fresh head. Maybe it will come up with something different. It thinks. Probably a little longer than usual. And boom. There it is. A shiny new code. What do we have here? A beautiful hallucination. Three non-existent columns. U name, U type, E R F date. Something has gone wrong. I'll delete this chat and try again. Just as I gave Copliot a chance by prompting it to learn the structure of the USR02 table, I did the same here. That should help. Processing. Neural noise shapes thoughts, arranges them into images, letters, produces code and sweat. And we got the result. But will it be correct or will the made-up columns appear again? Well, no. Again, all three are imaginary. U name, U type, and E R S D A. I'm curious what this is due to. I can ask for information about the structure of the table. We'll see what it finds. Well, I think I already know what the problem stems from. This information about the structure of the table is false. Perhaps the names even, at least in part, are existing. But they certainly do not come from the USR02 table. A typical hallucination. A representation of data that looks plausible at first glance but has little to do with reality. Confabulation, more simply. Take a look at even this link to SAP Help Portal. Looking at the URL, you can see that this is definitely not SAP Help Portal. Let's perhaps drop a curtain of silence on this. The programming exam was definitely not passed. Although more from the knowledge of tables, and without that, it is difficult to program but maybe it will do better with code translation. For this, knowledge of tables is less necessary. I found a snippet of code that I gave to Copilot for analysis. I will ask Gemini to explain it. We'll see if the result is comparable to GPT. I am waiting for the result. Something is coming up. At first glance, it looks clearer than the Copilot result. ABAP has been identified, that's good. First point, the block definition. Wow, I really like that. Nicely explained with that visual separation. In general, 100% clear explanation. The second point has all the parameters. Very logical division. S limit is slightly different from the others, so it is separately explained with details. Very clear. Point two groups all checkboxes. Block end is rather standard. The summary is highlighted and very clearly written. Overall, one big wow. I know it's simple code, but in my opinion, the description is perfect. It's as if it was written by a person, and he put a lot of effort into it, logically in correct language with a very good logical division. In addition, graphically, everything nicely highlighted. Top rating. 
I had no objections to the co-pilot results, but in this case I put Gemini higher. Well, I guess it's time for a little recap and maybe a return to what SAP has shown us. From my experiment, it seems that so far neither Microsoft's co-pilot, using ChatGPT4, nor Gemini, are particularly useful for programming. Gemini not at all. Copilot can help generate very simple things, the simplest reports, code snippets, but it certainly can't write an entire program with advanced business logic, tables, dependencies. Not yet. On the other hand, I think that both tools can be a great help for a module consultant who needs to analyze code and doesn't know or knows little about programming. I would say that I would choose Gemini for this purpose, but perhaps with more advanced cases, better knowledge of tables may speak in favor of Copilot. Rather, everyone should test both tools and choose the one that suits them better. I think this is actually the case where AI can increase people's productivity and be a very valuable tool. Let me go back for a moment to the demo that SAP presented a few months ago. I don't know what model is behind it. It is clear that general language models are unlikely to be good for programming in ABAP because it is a niche. Surely if there was to be a good model for developing programs in SAP, it would have to be not even fine-tuning, but rather a dedicated model. I here see a good use of synthetic data. If it would be possible to automatically generate a large number of programs in ABAP, which seems realistic. Otherwise, the number of available code may be too small to train models well in GPT architecture, but I may be completely wrong. What I'm getting at, however, is that it seems very optimistic to me that the tool was able to generate a fully working program from the first query. With all the complex dependencies and everything worked beautifully. Too nice to be true? Besides, even if it were successful, there are still some significant obstacles that could prevent SAP from releasing such a tool. And of course, I don't mean the interests of programmers. Imagine being able to generate an entire working program with a single click. Who is responsible for it? One of the pillars of AI ethics is human accountability. Humans must always have control over the code and must stay in the loop. When AI is a tool that generates snippets of code used in a larger program, it is clear that the creator and responsible party remains the programmer. It's a bit like the copy-paste technique from Stack Overflow, isn't it? On the other hand, when AI starts generating entire programs, the role of the programmer may slowly start to disappear and the responsibility of the human being will blur a bit. And after all, an error in the program can cause large financial losses. Won't there then be claims against the manufacturer of the program generation tool? And yes, I know that there are still tests, approvals along the way, but won't they also be shifted to AI over time? I leave you with these considerations, posing great curiosity about the final product, a demo of which SAP showed in August 2023. May your programs always run flawlessly in digital worlds. See you next time.